we think that we're going to continue to see this, no surprise, continue to grow. I don't think there's a great deal of value in speculating on a particular date. And what I would ask for everyone's help with is worry about today. Because if we stop doing the right thing today because we think something's going to happen in four weeks, we will make this worse. A top Pentagon doctor right there warning the pandemic could get worse, as you heard, with the number of cases around the world now approaching half a million, more than 21,000 deaths around the world. Let's bring in Dr. Devi, clinical associate professor at NYU Langone Medical Center, director of Metropolis Pain Medicine and author of Coronavirus Made Simple. Dr. Devi, thanks for coming in. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Let's start with what that Pentagon doctor was saying about how this could get worse. Important advice as the president and others weigh whether or not to sort of take the pedal, uh, you know, uh, off the metal, if you will, because they've been pushing forward on all fronts and saying, well, wait a second, maybe in a few weeks we'll start opening up parts of the economy. This Pen Pentagon doctor is saying move forward very carefully. Well, I agree that we have to move forward carefully. I mean, what we do today is critical. It could change things. This is a moving target. I think one of the most important things we have to do is put money in the hands of the American people. I mean, I was speaking to a patient just this week who had mild flu-like symptoms, but was talking about going to work as an essential worker, not in the healthcare area, but in a different area. Mm. And I was trying to urge this person to stay home, but you know, they were facing these questions. Well, what's the risk that I have coronavirus? A virus versus something else? What's the chance that I would infect someone else if I kept my distance and washed my hands? And if I did get someone else sick, what's the chance that that person would have a serious complication? So the person's balancing those questions against well, what's the risk that I can't afford my medication that's keeping me alive or the food that I need to put on the table? So we need to make it easier for people to do the right thing. We need to incentivize them to stay home and to help slow this thing down. Let's talk about the balance that is happening here in terms of statistics. Um, you know, we, we talked a moment ago um, about uh, how many cases around the world. Uh, now we have the diagnosed cases uh, in uh, half a million around the world, U.S. death toll at 1,046. A third of the world's population is on lockdown. Nearly 90 percent of the world's student population is out of school due to the virus. Uh, here in New York City, for example, as we try to weigh that balance, 13 deaths in 24 hours at this hospital in Elmhurst, Queens. That suggests blinking red. This is an alarm bell that there are real problems in New York City's hospitals. And then on the other hand, the governor, Andrew Cuomo, who we may hear from in a few moments again, he said yesterday, look, there are real problems, but we're making progress because of social distancing. Uh, and he's, he sees that things could be getting better. How do you balance all that, that out? Some of the alarm bells and some of the positive developments. Well, both are true. I mean, as we progress through this, we're seeing new problems coming up. But at the same time, you know, we are seeing a slowing down in terms of the rate of people dying. I mean, the problems I see when you're treating any kind of medical problem, you know, you have issues with space, you have staffing, you have equipment, and then you have supplies, whether it's medical or not medical, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of the space, there was an issue. There weren't enough ICUs. There weren't enough isolation rooms. There weren't enough rooms for really for people who had non-coronavirus related problems. But we saw progress on that. I mean, everybody's chipping in, whether it's these makeshift hospitals, you know, Javits Center, you're talking about hotels trying to chime in to kind of quarantine people and stuff. Uh, if we look at staffing, too, you know, healthcare workers aren't interchangeable. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's an issue because, you know, not everyone knows how to use a ventilator, how to use some of these, uh, these things that are life-saving, right? Yeah. It's a special skill set. Uh, so people are jumping in. People are coming out of retirement. You're seeing people shift from certain areas. So anesthesiologists who keep people alive in the OR are now working in the ICUs, for example. Uh, but like with anything, I mean, think about equipment. Like if you have a car at home, you know, your family may own it. You may know how to drive it as an adult, but that doesn't mean your five-year-old knows how to drive it. Yeah. So, you know, there are related problems here. There was a meme going around before things got mm -hmm. this dark. Uh, where people, you know, social media for doctors which said, stay at home if you don't want to be intubated, unless you want to be intubated by a gynecologist. Mm. And that's true. You know, different people can do different things. I mean, the other Got issues it. we're seeing are 
with medical supplies, the protective gear, of course, the swabs and the testing, and then non-medical supplies, I can see an issue coming up there as well because, you know, you need special detergents to clean surfaces, people in housekeeping, people who are doing the laundry, people who are, you know, managing the silverware, cleaning the computers. All of this stuff is critical. It, it is indeed, and you talk about uh, retired medical workers coming in, all hands on deck. It's very inspiring to see there's still a lot of challenges ahead. Dr. Devi, we appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra? The Senate approving that $2 trillion relief bill, and not a moment too soon, as jobless claims soar in the U.S. Now it is up to the House. So what happens next? With that, House Minority Whip Steve Scalise will be our guest. He joins us next. Plus, New York grappling with more coronavirus cases than any other state by far. And the numbers keep growing. A live report from New York City, where the mayor sees a long road ahead. We should not cling to that false hope. I want to get back to normal as much as anyone. But we're seeing right now, unfortunately, a growing uh, challenge, a growing crisis uh, that's clearly going to take us into April. <laughs>